Hey there, it's Boost Owen here. This is a Bosch WOK 2001. When I got it originally, it had a bit of a teething issue, which I've shown in another video, where the ball in the sump was stuck, so it wouldn't drain. But now, I've got bigger problems. So I brought it inside to the cellar, where I was going to use it, if that was my plan, and installed it, plumbed it in, all the pipes are there, plugged it in, and was tinkering with the knob on the front of it, just to choose a setting, and it heard a pop and it blew the miniature circuit breaker on the on the electric board in the house. So I thought that was peculiar, so I took the side off it and went to look and see if was there power getting in first of all, because there was no power to the to the front, and then noticed that the extension cord which I had it on, which is in a 13 amp cord, had no light on it, so I checked that, it blew the fuse on that as well, replaced that fuse, plugged it in again, this time with the front open, and pop, without doing it, I turned it on with the main switch here on the other side, and uh, pop again. You can see I've managed to pull off the printed circuit board here, the control module. It's pretty smoky. It looks to be something in the connectors there because it doesn't look to have fried anything. It's all it's all dirty. Let's get some more light. All, all of the smoke is concentrated down here in the bottom corner which is where the pin connectors are. So it may not have fried any of the components. It, like, it appeared to be an arc internally. So maybe there was carbon dust just enough to make it transfer. It looks to be that one there, which is five connectors on that side. I think it's three and two and three and two. Probably figure out what, what component it is, but I've, it could be a component error or it could be an error on the board. So it might just be a case of desoldering and resoldering. You can see here it's blown the solder off. So a good clean and a wash with some spirits might fix it. Yeah, a bit of a weird one. It's a nice machine. In doing that though, I had some challenges because I had to get the front off it and I didn't know how to do that and the side was easy because I'd done that before. I also figured out how to get the top off it, which wasn't very complicated. There's two screws going into the back to hold it. The hinges are just dropped into these slots and then they're screwed with screws from behind. So a screw on each side does that. On the front here, there's a little screw on each side of the fascia panel. That lodges in here. And then you've got to if you look underneath, there are three little cutouts, like that one there. They're only tiny. Stick a screwdriver in and somehow pop it. I don't really know what I was popping. I think you're popping up these little black, these little black nodes here. There's one over there as well. Just popping them up. There's something rattling in there I need to get out as well. And uh, then it just lifts off this rim here. There's a little... A little groove there it lifts off that and just rolls forward and I have it. It should, it should be, it's got these black hooks that should engage and it sits like that but uh, if you move it sideways slightly it sits a bit further forward. Bit of a weird one. Right, I'm going to figure out what uh, what cables it was going to and see is there an error further down. But it still shouldn't arc up here even if there was an error it should all fail okay. So I've just lined up where the different connectors go and sussed out where they go to. We have a lot of orange ones, grey ones, red ones. So the red, I've traced all the way down to the element. This yellow ended three greys goes over here to the float switch or the pressure switch. Uh, the four oranges goes to these four oranges here. And they go on this side so we don't need to worry about them. We've got three oranges which go well, I don't know if I figured them out. And two greys which go to the main switch. And the two greys to the main switch seem to be the ones that have blown. So it seems to be the first three. One, two, three look okay. But it's the main switch. So the power coming in seems to have the fault on it. Like it works. It's a, just a switch. So I don't know why that would have blown. So I, I suspect you can see up here there's some carbon that just wipes off with my finger. So what I might do is take this out of its plastic case and give it a bit of a bath and have a look at both sides and see how we're getting on. So I've taken the casing off it. That carbon dust here, it's got a lot of carbon dust on the other side there. There's a little controller there, the TOP21 OPFI, I think that's what it's called. And there's some look like diodes, but they could be, I don't think they're diodes. There's something else, the little bubbles. Looks like there's a resistor there. 
blown out. Seems to have damage on the ceramic. That's this one to the left, L1 there. Seems to have a little hole in it. I'm not sure if that's an issue. There's a lot of carbon around that coil of copper. But down the bottom where the connectors are, it looks okay. So it's down here. It's just those two have blown. So I don't know if that's fixable. I guess I should check the operation of the switch as well, but I don't see that that's a fault. What I suspect is that there was some dust between these two connectors and it just fried itself. But you don't know if that's fried something else as well, so... It's a pretty unique board, funny shape. It has the motor controller, I think, on that massive heatsink there in the middle. And then there's a couple of relays on it and a couple more relays. It's a funny machine, this, because, because it uh, has this door on the top. On the side... Here, there's a little sensor, so I don't know if there's, I presume there's a taco on the motor, but there's also this position sensor here, so on the side, there's these little grooves all the way along, I don't know if they're connected to it. Um, I think they're just a way of locating this, what I presume is a metal or a magnetic sensor there, a bit dirty, and it uh, identifies against this, I guess it's just a little lump of steel or something, it could be a magnet, because uh, it's an aluminium flywheel. So when it passes, it gives a signal, I guess, to those three cables. Three cables makes me think it could be something like that uh, magnetic... Uh, oh, I can't remember what the number was. A little magnetic sensor I used in transistorized ignitions a while ago. So that might be something there. It just tells it where, where it is, and then it can relocate it. I don't know. I didn't see that feature working on it. If I bring this up and give it a little scrub and see if I can tidy it up. So I've just got this medical alcohol. I'm going to put a bit on the tissue. You could use a cotton bud as well, and just working it around. I was going to use tap water, but the issue with tap water is that you have to let it dry. And with alcohol it just evaporates off. Getting stuck is the little um, solder nodes. I've seen as well that you can put circuit boards into ultrasonic cleaners. So I've got a big blowout across here and here. It's got neutral and live there, that looks to be for testing. For testing the board. So the three here one P8, P3, and P106. They look okay. Likewise, these ones over here all look okay. Try and get that a bit cleaner. And the trace that runs around the outside here looks to be pretty ropey. It's got a lot of green on the copper there. You can see a bit of green on the copper there as well. So it looks to be a moisture issue. See how dirty that is. That's all soot from the burning. I'm just cleaning off any place that I can see carbon on the on the board. I guess for whatever reason there's just a little bit of static at that point and that attracts attracts the carbon to stick. There's a bit in there. So we've identified what we think is a symptom. It doesn't mean that this is the cause. This is just what we've seen as the result of a little explosion. There's a break there. Now, why that would matter, I don't know, because as far as I'm concerned, power can flow the other way. But it looks like on this one, we might have lost continuity altogether. So 127 is this one here. It appears to be this one here. It's the L2, J5 side, and then the other one, L2, is this one here, and that one comes back to here. So this is where I'm up to. I've got the board nice and clean, and I'm going to reassemble it. I've looked at the traces on it that are bad, and you can see they're, they're blown. Let's have a look. The ones that are blown, there there is a pathway for the electricity, so... I'm not sure if it'll work, but I've cleaned it so that it shouldn't be arcing because of carbon dust or anything. So we'll see if it works as it is. 
and if it does well all the better and if it doesn't we're still where we were before so I'll install it now and see how we go power off let's plug it in so I've just plugged it in right now we don't have any water let's see if we pop everything Seems to be working. Okay. There's no lid on it. Don't remember what it's set to. So I'm guessing I'm going to have to plug it out and see if I can put it all together. Well, I won't have to see. I'll just put it all together. So the lid just has these legs as a hinge that pop in plastic, one on each side. And they just locate in slots on the back. And the screws that were in it before look like this now and I don't want to put them back in so I'm going to get another set of screws for that uh, they were Torx and the heads are pretty gone on them but I managed, like they, they came out okay but I wonder how so I'll get something better on that so a couple of one inch zinc plated screws should do it so I realized that this had fallen inwards somehow so I've just snapped it forwards with uh, large pliers and yeah that just snaps in now it's got a bit of a scrape on it but that's not not a big deal for me let's plug it in got power I've got some laundry in it there's nothing to see in this machine because it's a top loader with a closed top sparky sparky no okay I was gonna give it give it a 40 wash give it a 40 wash because it's some dirty stuff in it that's a two-hour wash so I'm definitely not gonna make a video of this um, short wash that's better so let's make it a short wash and you've got a delay start timer there as well will it arc not yet need some water It sounds like it's moving inside. Got water coming in. So look at that circuit board from before. What I think about it is, it might work, well it obviously works with a motor. It might not work with the high spinning speed of a motor, but really the most electricity comes through when the element goes on. So I've set it to 40, which means that with cold water only on this machine, it should trigger the element it has to trigger the element to achieve 40 so perhaps when the element comes on it'll arc in that case I'll know it's probably not a fault of the element it's a fault with the circuit board and we'll take it out again if that happens and have a look although I've got a suspicion because of the way these things are that it might just work and that'll be that so I'll come back when it finishes and we'll see or if it arcs I'll come back in the meantime okay it seems to have worked we're down to zero minutes turn off that short wash thing Let's put this up to X, let's turn this off, and then let's press this to open the lid. And it's returned the drum to the, the door to the top, which I think is because of that sensor. But we'll find out, let's push this down, push that in, they pop up, soap's gone, everything looks okay. Dirty rags are still pretty dirty, um, but clean enough. So that's excellent. So what happened there then? Well, I cleaned the circuit board and put it back in and it worked. Jobs are good. Thanks for watching. See you later.